I think optimism that there is still a path. It's only a few days after the election results. Biden has already spoken. My family gathered. Much of the world celebrated. Some didn't. My relative in Iran asked me about the last episode. A bit concerned I'm not as hopeful as I usually am. I like the ending very much, Piru, she says. You sound a bit more concerned in this episode. Your tone sounded concerned. The way she says it makes me think I might not have communicated exactly how I feel. I'm ecstatic. It feels right. And I know all the sides out there. But it's exactly as Joe says. It's time to put away the harsh rhetoric. I also know as Joe speaks, there are images that flash through my mind. My father with his hand over his face as Trump says he won't concede. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. My mother putting on her glasses and grinning from ear to ear as Kamala speaks for women everywhere. And protecting our democracy takes struggle. My relative in Iran texting me as the news comes in saying, After four years, my dream to come to America can finally happen. The child who tells me how he felt about children being separated at the border during a protest in 2018. They couldn't be separated. The line of presidents on Mr. Cheeseman's wall in my eighth grade U.S. history class and me looking up at George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Abraham Lincoln and dreaming about what it was to be an American. Are you, violent? Are you for or against this? All right, uh, my Daniel. family send me messages saying how happy they are for me. Aren't they upset in Iran that Trump couldn't win? They were hoping that he could bring down the whole Islamic regime. No, they want what I want. They are happy. They love me. I want my mother to be happy too. This is the time for celebration, my father says during another of our daily hikes. It's raining again. He stops on the trail and raises his umbrella, teaching me how to fight off lions. This umbrella is good if there are lions, he says. You have to raise it very high and it can scare them away. You have to have an umbrella or something like this. Make yourself this big. Then stand on your ground. Never move. When it comes and try to attack you. He says this and starts walking away. And I laugh, realizing there are no lions in this forest. And then I realize nothing my father says is without meaning. This Trump miscalculated. He told everyone not to vote by mail and he could manipulate the system with lawsuit later. You think he could have won if he told people to vote by mail? Is possible. I remember working a long shift bartending in my 20s at the East End Cafe in Delaware. I was rushing out to make a speech my dad was giving for World Unity Day, an idea he's championed most of his life. I try to really um, uh, to have a Unity Day in uh, United States of America. This is where I have World Unity Day, my dad says as Biden speaks. To everything there is a season, a time to build, a time to reap, and a time to sow, and a time to heal. There's unity in humanity is a delight. And see, race for race unity is good to make us unite. I get pulled over by the cops as soon as I leave the East End parking lot. They're harassing me for no reason. They even make me do a sobriety test, touching my nose and saying the alphabet backwards. I tell my girlfriend in the car with me that this is racism. I say how ironic it is that I'm going to World Unity Day and I'm being treated like a criminal right now. And she, I see a new day, an army of the light. Please, I say to the cop. I'm missing my dad's speech. I passed all your tests. Please let me go. We have to stop treating our opponents as our enemies. I think of the barber who asked me where I was from at nine years old and then refused to cut my hair. I said, you, uh, we are not going to move from this place until you cut my son's hair. My father says, recollecting the incident from my film Sometimes I Dream in Farsi in 2018. I look at my brother and parents watching more news about the concession and still believing in America. Dee-doo, Biden, dee-doo, doo-doo, my brother sings and claps his hands in celebration. Dee-doo, da-doo, dee-da, da dee-doo, Biden, Biden, boo. I think of the streets of Tehran and my golden chick. Hey, viva fall, rose del vesheno, as chamushi man. And my grandfather lifting me in the air and saying, Beper, Bache, Beper. You know, my father tells me on another hike in warmer weather, I get a ticket for my father and mom and Panna to come see me when I work in Oregon. He is walking with me at that age, and I see he's sweating very badly. I know something is wrong. Then he says to me, You don't even bring a Coke? I tell him we need to stop and go back, and he says, No, we start this. Now we have to finish. 
when we finally get to plateau, there are these young women at the top and he says, ah, these are angels. Thank you. He was so happy on that plateau. After that, I go visit him in the hospital for two weeks. They cut two thirds of his stomach and one third grow back over time. And he gets another 22 year, a second life at 71 years old. I think of the journey of my family to America, all the battles, hardship, and success. No matter what, they still believe in America. I write a letter to Biden today, my dad tells me, still hiking. I tell him he has to do World Unity Day. I arrive as my father's speech is ending on World Unity Day. The title of this poem is Oneness of God, Humanity and Religion. The cop finally lets me go and I bite my lip and grin and bear the onslaught to dream along with him. There on that stage, my father stands proudly and proclaims it's time for all people of all colors and religions to come together. Let's create a loving, just and graceful family environment for human unity so she grows to compose and conduct the most beautiful symphony of love, justice, oneness and grace. The mayor gave me this plaque, my father says in 2018, and shows me the picture frame. I say all this 10 years ago. Now as Biden watches the fireworks with his family and Kamala's, I see an America where I might belong, the dream my father never stopped believing in when he came to this country in 1977. And I think how lucky I am to keep climbing this mountain with an umbrella under my arm in case a hungry lion comes again. This is the end of season two of Stories Between Iran and America. In a week or so, we will be posting a fundraising trailer on Indiegogo to help us make season three. It's been tough to make these during the pandemic without funds or enough work, but I'm committed to bringing more of these stories to all who have supported us with messages, donations, and kind words, and the others who are finding us because of your sharing and much needed word of mouth. If I can ask for your continued support, please share and donate either past or future episodes, our Indiegogo fundraiser, or our donation page at the International Documentary Association, it would really make a difference. Thank you again for all your messages and your continued support. I look forward to sharing more stories between Iran and America with all of you. <laughs>